What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to another edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Saturday, January 6th, 2024. Um, welcome to the weekly recap where we bring you the top stories from this shortened week. So it'll mainly be um, the stories we covered both on Wednesday and Thursday. Lots of great stuff going on, guys. You know, Libya shutting down um, um, due to a protest, oil spiking up. We've got, you know, California, a Chevron slashing $4 billion in California amongst a host of stories i'll let the team decide which ones um they want to cover before we dive in guys remember all the news and analysis you are about to hear is brought to you by the world's greatest website www.energynewsbeat.com the best place for all of your energy news student the team do a tremendous job of keeping that website up to speed with everything you need to know to make sure at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and oil and gas business apple podcast spotify wherever you get your podcast follow us at energy news beat on youtube you can go ahead and hit the description below see all the links to the show and go ahead um, and hit the different timestamps. Jump ahead to whichever one you want to see. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the team in the weekly recap. We'll see you next week, folks. Hey, let's start off with our buddies over there at uh, OPEC. And I want to give a shout out to the Irina Slav. I, I absolutely love Irina. She is an absolute hoot. Um, Irina Slav at Substack.com. Uh, OPEC's influence on oil prices to remain significant in 2024. Uh, Michael, I just want to read these three bullet points real quick. Fears lower demand and rising non-OPEC supply threatens the OPEC cuts. Bullet point number two, U.S. oil producers took everyone by surprise this year, adding one million barrels uh, in daily output. Woo, go U.S. oil. Uh, OPEC share in the global uh, total may have fallen because of the cuts, but it's still pretty solid at 27% of the total. This is going to be the only time that I quite honestly may disagree a little bit with Irina. No. And I'm going to talk to her uh, next Monday on the inter uh, international show with Armand uh, Kevin. And uh, it is a great group with David Blackman and everybody else and Tammy Nima. Here's where I disagree a little bit. OPEC is losing the ability to manipulate prices because of the dark fleet and BRICS. BRICS is now really trading outside of the petrodollar, mm -hmm. and there's nothing in this next year that's really going to show that BRICS is going to have their pricing matrices priced into the, the dollar but you're going to see the demise of the U.S. dollar kick in with the pricing matrices stabilizing out under bricks. That's still yet to be determined, but they don't have that handled yet. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, obviously the dynamics of OPEC Plus have have stumbled a little bit with the addition of, of, of bricks, if only because of the fact that there seem to be different. It, I love what Irina does here is, is points out that, you know, the, the non OPEC, that first bullet point, non OPEC supply threats are almost more important than the cuts happening um, elsewhere of OPEC. Now, you have to take U.S. off the table, as she aptly points out. We've done an incredible job of adding barrels to the market, a little over one million barrels per day added back to the to the market. That's one thing you won't hear Joe Biden talk about on the campaign trail. He'll 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 leave that convenient fact out that he was responsible for adding one million barrels of oil to, to the U.S. Well, market. Kind of crazy. It is crazy. But let's give a shout out to our great uh, oil and gas industry, because the regular uh, uh, legislation through regulatory actions taken by this administration have been horrific. And mm -hmm. the consumers getting it in the drive through In fact, they're getting hit in the back of the head with a shovel so hard by this administration's regulatory actions. Their price for energy is gone through the roof and they get hit in the back of the head with a shovel. They got to put their eyes back in their head yeah. go around. It's a horrible yeah. thing. I say it tongue in cheek because the cost of energy has also then risen, even though oil and we even though we've added one million barrels to the market, 
energy costs for everybody have risen. So it's, you know, I'm, you know, we can thank Heinz 57 for that. So I, I think OPEC, you know, OPEC plus is. <laughs> Lurch is a mutt. <laughs> um, OPEC plus, I think is really in an interesting position. They can continue to cut, 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 cut. And as we sit here right now, oil's 70 bucks, not even some, I mean, not even a full, I mean, the only thing that, I mean, and I hate to say this, the only thing that's going to save oil prices. And when I mean save, I mean, get it back to the, the 90, a hundred dollar, $120 oil prediction that everybody had. I mean, let's, let's be very clear here. Everybody in that, you know, quarter three of 2023, every talking head was saying 90 to a hundred dollar oil. As we stand today, in 2024 oil is 70 bucks and the only thing that can possibly get us there is full-blown lindsey graham style war with iran which nobody wants and we should avoid at all no. costs that man needs to be run out of town yeah. he's uh, been lobotomized a... he's been lobotomized oh what a chatterhead uh lindsey graham being a republican is absolutely a chatterhead. And Lindsey Graham, if you're listening to the show, you're invited to come on this podcast. I will fly out and talk to you. I want to find out what you're thinking. I want to look under your toupee and find out. I'd prefer to talk to a stunt double. I mean, he's been lobotomized, but that's beside the point. Point is, uh, outside of that mm -hmm. horrific thought, of war with Iran, direct conflict with Iran. But I Iran, Iran had their uh, destroyer go into the Red Sea and oil burped for 12 hours. And, and, and so now you and I have talked about this last year. You can see wars break out and it really does not impact it. Here's where I'm going to say it does impact it if Lindsey Graham gets his way because the Iran is shipping everything that they can not in U.S. dollars. You eliminate their amount of oil and it happens. Are you raising your hand? Yeah, I'm with you. No, I'm just saying I'm with you. Okay. So point of the matter is I'm you know, <laughs> all that being said, Stu. Markets open today at, at, at you know, 6, you know, 7 a.m. this morning. Markets open 7.30. What happened? Or excuse me, 8.30 our time. We, yeah, we've seen yeah. an absolute tumble from 7 a.m. up at 70, a uh, little north of 73.50 uh, all the way to currently trading here. I mean, it's about 11.30 a.m. here on Tuesday. 70.64. Right. That's you know like, what? Uh, hang on. I think this is uh, some of the politicians. They're doing some insider trading and they called yeah. up and they had the stock market reduce it so they can short the market. Yeah, I mean, markets I are down it. significantly. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, and come on, you, you they, they, they're all just excellent traders. <laughs> all right. Um, very interesting. We love Irina. Go check this one out. Let's go to Qatar, Exxon Mobil, moving forward with Golden Pass LNG uh, work. This is huge. I, I always love seeing Qatar uh, and other foreign countries buying our great assets. Um, Japan has bought a lot of the LNG uh, facilities so they can nail down theirs. They just announced that uh, last month as well, too. Then you have nice. Total Energy uh, buying enough for two nuclear reactors. They have bought into ERCOT, but you're not going to see that. I've got to bet with you. What Right now, we're going to write this down. I bet you can't find it in their earnings report coming up. <laughs> no. It's going to be interesting to see where they bury that. Now, let's go to this article. State-owned Qatar owns 70% stake in the Golden Pass project with capacity more than 18 MTPA and off take 70% of the capacity on long-term contracts. 30% is only what ExxonMobil. Do you insane. know what that that is horrific for energy security for the US? Yeah, no, it's 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 one of the few areas where I agree with our our favorite senator John Fetterman. I mean, he's he was all over the US the the, the Nippon steel taking over uh, U.S. steel. He was all over that. I mean, he uh, he's obviously come out of whatever sickness he had, and he's like, he's like thinking. It's crazy. Hey, do you think on a conspiracy theory, he actually signed up for the chip from Elon? No. I oh, I, I'm, I'm kidding, but I don't know. I mean, wow, where did this come from? You're on the chip. Um, you're, If anyone's on the chip, it's you. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very little. We we can point to about six months ago. Stu got the chip involved. It's been, it's been off the rails since. But no, it's it's very fascinating. And and the government and specifically the Federal Trade Commission is going to have a. They've got a they've got their hands filled right now. I've heard rumblings that they don't like this Permian consolidation going on, and that the Exxon Pioneer deal, the Chevron, um, Hess deal, and all of these other ones are going to get a huge scrutiny look from from the FTC from the standpoint of is this too do they think this is too much consolidation I don't oh. believe it is but we can discuss that in another room the point is the problem is they're too busy worrying about if Chevron should buy Hess to American companies when you've got Japan coming in and buying up all our stuff. I mean, we like Japan. I got nothing against Japan, but we should be owning U.S. steel. You've got Qatar Energy coming in, swooping up. You know, one of our most uh, Sabine Pass is one of our most important infrastructure transit for for natural gas. And now we're going to take the biggest export terminal available near that, and we're going to hand it over to Qatar. Because oh yeah, they've got our best interest at heart for sure. Oh, I love no. Qatar. Never been there. But uh, I'm right. going to get my passport updated so I can go move there. Here's one of the things that please. Uh, oh yeah. We're shooting please. a show at midnight. Yeah. We're, we're off and running, baby. Hey, uh, one of the things though, is the uh, um, Venezuela and um, Guyana uh, item going off because that impacts Chevron and Hess big time and it's not being covered in the main uh news it's like ho hum i mean venezuela come on it's overtaking all of our uh american oil companies that are out there drilling in guyana some of the largest uh areas in the world yeah I and mean, i don't think we'll act that'll actually i mean it's more you know, oh, they still. I'm not too worried about the Venezuelan conflict. Maybe meeting, you are. He's meeting with Russia. He's signed a deal. He's done some more things. So you're talking you coordinate to some, that meeting between uh, Putin and Maduro. Uh, actually, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because Armando asked me this morning if I was on the plane with the Venezuelan and Brazilian uh, <laughs> uh, presidents and Putin, and I did say, by the way, if it did happen. Uh, Putin would have said that the U.S. sanctions uh, don't matter because he doesn't mind. It's mind over matter, baby. Mind over matter. Next up, we've got appeals court delivers fatal blow to California city pushing natural gas ban for Berkeley, California. Um, and a federal appeals court rejected their petition on Tuesday to rehear a case related to a natural gas ban that was proposed by said city. The U.S. Court of Appeals from the Ninth Circuit ultimately denied Berkeley's position, um, petition, excuse me, for rehearing um, this ban, which was a motion that it received from the Biden administration, Democratic Love States, um, after it failed um, to receive a majority support from the court's non recused active judges. Uh, the Berkeley filed a motion last year. Um, 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 basically that said their law, you know, it was overturned. Their law banning natural gas violated a federal statute that was then appealed by Berkeley. They worked it all the way up until the federal appeals court. It got turned down, which means it's either going to be taken up by the Supreme Court or if what they do most likely is not pick it up, then this is going to stand as a win for your natural gas burner, you know, win for all the cooks and diners. In, in California. I, mean, I can imagine going to a diner and having my eggs cooked on a flat top, or not a flat top, or a steak cooked without a, a gas grill. Unbelievable, guys. Um, quote coming out of uh, the Air Conditioning, Heating, Refrigeration Institute. Absolutely. Well, they, they've got lobbyists for everything, folks. The AHRI. Naturally, the eight is a quote. Naturally, the AHRI in particular are member companies that manufacture products and equipment that use natural gas are very pleased. I love how they just come out and say who they're lobbying for. People who use equipment that uh, uses natural gas, um, they're quote, very pleased with the full quarter to deny Berkeley's request, thereby allowing the Berkeley's residents elsewhere to continue have choices with respect to their energy sources, uh, according to the president and CEO over there, Stephen Urich. Um, you know, absolute. This was, you know, ban was uh, originally in acted in in july 2019 they went ahead and uh uh passed and said the uh, ban was going to go into effect january 20 well that came and went um a little thing called covid probably got in the middle of that um you know the california restaurants association stepped up i mean when people said they're coming for your natural gas stoves this is the stuff we were talking 
you know, yes, I know everybody, you know, everybody liked on the Democratic side, like to use that as a trope that, well, they said we were coming for natural gas stoves, but we're not. Well, you kind of are, at least in California. Luckily, the good people of the Ninth Circuit over there in California um, came through for us. We all get to enjoy our gas goes, even for the people in our favorite state, California. Chevron just impaired California's their their California oil, gas, and production assets due to regulatory challenges. Absolutely unbelievable. They said in a filing today that Chevron will book fourth quarter charges of three point five to four billion, citing assets that it said sold in Gulf of Mexico and policies in California prompting the company to slash investments. Mainly, um, they come out and said that it's mainly taking the charges. Um, um, due to the California assets, um, you know, they're they're going to continue to take this. But it, it goes to show you, folks, they're specifically saying this. What is this? They said in the filing it will impair oil and gas production assets, mostly in California, because of, quote, continuing regulatory challenges. If Stu was here, he would say legislation through regulation or, or regulation through legislation. He'd be pounding it. Regulation through legislation. This is what's happening. And when you do this too much, the only companies that can afford to do this type of stuff are Chevron. And guess what? Even they're going to get out of the business. Even they're telling you, you, we'd rather walk away and slash our investments by four b -b 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 billion dollars when and walk away instead of attempting to work it, that means that there's nothing to be done here it means there's zilch to be done i'd be super nervous if i was a california producer even your even chevron can't figure out how to make it work now there's still some companies there that are making it work you know we we we, we know a lot of people that produce a lot of oil in california i'm not saying in the bad but i would be very nervous if i was because even the bigger companies can't quite figure out what to do